dear friends in the Dhamma, just I recited a stanza very familiar with Buddhist to discuss about the members of the society and mainly to discuss about the family and its management according to Buddhist point of view. First of all, I would like to wish you for the 2011 to have a very prosperous year. At the same time, I want to say that this is the fifth year of our program of Dhamma Talks. I can remember how we started this Dhamma series. Actually, I am very proud of this program because I proposed it to arrange after the demising of our late Chief Reverend. What we do here, this is the what the Chief Reverend conducted every Friday. You were very happy to see him in this stage. We were very happy to see him sitting in this special stage with a big crowd, not like today, because he was so great personality. Because of him, we are enjoying our spiritual way in the Brickfield Temple. So, dear friends in the Dhamma, since then, we continue his way to respect the left chief river. Now we have many Dhamma speakers from different parts of the world, including the senior venerable Dr. Puniji. So you are very lucky to have such Dhamma speakers. I know that you are sharing spiritual happiness with our spiritual masters. Today, I selected a new topic relevant to the modern society. It is Buddhism for the family management. So this topic is very important for the marriage couples and again those who want to be a husband and wife and one thing if there are some single members for them not so important I think there are some single once here, listening to the Dhamma talk under this topic, anyway, they can advise to others how to arrange their family according to Buddhist way. Why I selected this topic? There is a reason. In the modern world, you have a lot of problems with the family scattered and no happiness in the family lot of problems some they are very serious about their family management so on so I decided to select this topic to show you how to build a happy family life under 
Buddhist teachings. The Buddha was so great. He was the enlightened one and he was so clever to discuss about everything and anything. The teaching of the Buddha is for everybody and anybody. Buddhism goes with everyone in the world. We can apply Buddhism to any kind of society. In this way we should look at it and find the way how to understand Buddhism to apply for our family management. So dear friends in the Dhamma, we can remember that once Buddha met a lay person with a big question. What was his question? He requested the Buddha, please, the way how to build the family according to Buddhistic way. Do you think that we as lay people cannot practice your path? The Buddha said, no. As a lay person, you can practice Buddhism. I would like to introduce they how to be your family life in successful way. Then the Buddha narrated the special principles to be practiced as lay people. This is the first thing we should know. At the beginning we should be ready to build our personality as lay people. It is very important. Normally in the society we have problem cases. Automatically we become very weak. We are not ready to face to the challenges or problems. We are afraid of them. We are searching for a way to escape from problems, not to face to them. When we try to find a way to escape from problems, automatically we become very lazy and weak. We should be ready to face to the situation. So Buddha first of all asked him to build his personality. To be a proper human being. Buddhism is for that. Buddhism says the way how to build the human nature. Human beings are the only beings in this universe with understanding, with a kind of special energy. We should be sure about them. All these qualities we have, but we neglect them. We are not ready to cultivate them. If we cultivate them, then we are ready to face to any situation. We are ready to face to any challenge or any problem. So Buddha asked that gentleman to be ready to practice proper worldly life. 
with what? With four qualities. The number one is called in Pali Uttana Sampada. Uttana Sampada means determination. That means to have a clear vision. We should be with a clear vision. And that clear vision should be there with understanding about his own qualities. It is called Uttana Sampada. Without this kind of determination, we cannot go ahead. If we are so weak, then we cannot go ahead. To get that determination, every individual should understand about himself or herself. Buddhism for that, to understand himself or herself. Who am I? You should put that question first to yourself and see your own weaknesses and build the qualities to be a real human being. So that is called Uttana Sampada. Then Buddha mentioned about Arak Sampada. That means protection. To have real protection. How to get protection? To be understand that you should cultivate good qualities within you. And then you can protect yourself. You can protect your property even. And all others will be protected if you have that quality with you. It is called Arakka Sampada. And then Kalyana Mittata to be associated with spiritual friends. We are very familiar with this word Kalyana Mittata. As Buddhists we have discussed very often about this kind of friends. There are various kind of friends in the society. Spiritual friends, good friends and normal friends. We can divide them into three categories. Who are the normal friends? Those who are associating with you whenever you have any kind of meeting and say hello to you, they are normal friends. Just sitting and say hello, that's all. No more connection. They are normal friends. And then good friends. Good friends means sometime when you want something, you can ask a kind of help from them, then they help you. They are good friends. They are ready to help you. And then the, the best one is called Kalyana Mittata. Spiritual friends. This is the most important group of our friends. Spiritual friends are always ready to look after you, to help you, to share with you happiness or unhappiness, to guide you. They do like that. Those who are looking after you, you can imagine, they are the parents. They are looking after you. Mainly parents. They are our spiritual friends. And then, those who are guiding us 
to go in this way they are our teachers or spiritual masters guiding us those who are ready to share happiness so suffering with us they are our very close friends associating always with us they share everything with us so teachers spiritual masters parents and other very close friends they are called kalyana mitra or spiritual friends so buddha said that to build your proper personality as a lay one lay person you should have such kind of friends and then samajivi kata this is very important to manage with everything properly we should be ready in your lay life management in the family can be arranged if you know how to keep balance in your way of living you should keep in balance the more whatever the things you have you have to keep them in a balance you should be ready to accept what you have you should not be ready to expect more then it is a problem it is a problem for your management in your family life so with that advice in this way araka sampada uttana sampada kalyana mitata samajivi kata these are the main four principles to be practiced by us to create proper personality so with this expression we should continue our discussion first of all as a lay person as a member of the lay society we all should build proper personality without that personality you cannot get success in your family life today in the society there are so many complaints about families husband says against wife wife says against husband children says against parents and relatives criticize their children so on so many complaints the main reason is that we are not with the real personality because of that we create unnecessary problems when we build the family and again we should go to the concept of family what is a family family is mainly with husband and wife that is why i mentioned first that this subject this topic is fit for the husbands and wives and this topic is very suitable to those who are going to be husbands and wives because all these teachings one day or other you can apply into your family and then you should have a question how a buddhist monk can say about the family problems yes how far you know about family problems how far you have experience about family problems been a monk 
more than 50 years we associate with families especially in Sri Lanka we are very close to the families I think you cannot find such a connection with other countries in Sri Lanka monk is the we say deity of the family Kula Devata in our language deity of the family why they say so whatever the problem they have they bring that problem to the temple so same thing with me being the chief monk of my temple sometime husband comes to the temple sometime wife come to the temple sometime children come to the temple and say against each other recently one husband came to see me and he put a wonderful question or a problem to me he mentioned that venerable sir now why you have decided to go away from the family then I asked why no sir my wife is not ready to respect me this is the way he started to say then I asked can you tell me in detail about the reason for that then he started to say about his sorrowful situation he said venerable sir I had a very good friend of mine he is younger to me but he lost his job then he asked me whether you can help me to stay in your house for a short time till I find a job then he accepted because he was one of his good friends not a spiritual friend he was a good friend you remember I just mentioned about the meanings of those friends he was a good friend then he gave a chance to stay in his house then what happened then this poor man was telling me sir now my wife is respecting my friend as her husband not myself that is why I decided to, to run away do you have any answer to help him let me know what he can do now I think you don't have any answer no, it is not an easy task it's a very difficult situation then I said oh my dear friend you have done a very great mistake the first thing is you have not understood the nature of your wife oh, this is the beginning of our topic if you want to build a real family life for the management of your family husband and wife should have proper understanding each other to get that understanding husband should have a proper personality that personality with all kind of qualities mental and physical and all today a lot of problems in the society or in the family because of this misunderstanding between each other husband and wife so if anyone here is ready to get married in the future first of all please have proper understanding between each other and build your own palace between these two husband and wife that palace should be only for them 
not for the others then all kind of problems this is called worldly life this is called the worldly life worldly life is with a desire there is no limit of desire tannahaya jayati soko limitless no limit we don't know when that desire goes up we don't know it happens very fast so having understood the dhamma if you build the family you can have a very beautiful kind of family life for that buddha has mentioned so many instructions as the principles for family management the first one is real understanding between the husband and wife and then now we should go to different discourses through these discourses we can collect all other principles or teachings with the priest to build a proper family life the first one is called parabhava sutta in the parabhava sutta it says that if you are a husband you should know your own qualities and if you can enjoy with those qualities with your partner then there will not be any dispute between husband and wife so that is also same it means we all every individual must know our own nature whether i am a short temper whether i am a person with jealousy so on we should know it everything about ourselves this is also a problem in the society we don't try to find out ourselves instead of that we try to find everything of others that is all i must know my own good qualities and bad qualities you all should know each other you are good qualities and bad qualities and when you find out your bad qualities is what you have to do just try to reduce them at once cannot but slowly for instance you have normally a short temper we have such characters then what you should do to reduce it to get anger very fast what is the treatment for that it is very simple what we should do we know that we should practice metta meditation this is the only treatment and when you practice metta meditation every day perfectly automatically we come to a certain level where we can see ourselves and we then try to reduce little by little our anger or short temper so we should have it if we have short temper jealousy misunderstanding or ignorance we cannot build a proper family life new no, it is not possible we should be very open to others we should be very flexible to others we should be with patient we should be ready to listen to others not to criticize others but to praise others normally in the society 
this is also a problem we are not ready to praise others husband is not ready to praise his wife wife is not ready to praise his husband in secret they criticize each other my wife is not like me wasting everything careless girl so on. unfortunately i found him her huh? if i came to know her first i would have to reject so on so many complaints it is our nature but to have a beautiful family we must know the dhamma dhamma is not only to attain nibbana dhamma is to build a family this is the wonderful thing in buddhism buddhism is not only to attain nibbana before that how many things we have to achieve first thing is to build the family beautiful family actually i am very sorry to say many buddhist families are not successful not successful why they don't apply the teaching of buddha to their family life that is why we have this problem in that sense i am thinking nowadays from next year onward i ask brother prem to arrange like that way to meet it and every families because why i propose like that nowadays there are so many dhamma speakers so we have enough dhamma speakers now the time has come to go to families and discuss with them how far they have used dhamma to create beauty in their family from next year onward i will be ready to visit even your all families you should be ready to welcome me what type of questions i would like to put to you first one is i want to ask dear friend where is your wife dear friend where is your husband you cannot say oh she is no more with me <laughs> he is no more with me you cannot say both of you should be ready to welcome me and next thing where are your children when i ask that question the children should come from their own rooms normally this is also a problem nowadays what parents do parents have given them separate rooms with what with a tv and a computer so their father is computer mother is tv they only respect them if you ask my dear son come immediately they don't come no mother i am busy with something in my computer no mother i am enjoying with a cartoon they don't come we have to change it they should enjoy with computer and watching tv but they should watch the tv with parents should not give them separately to enjoy because of this problem there are so many complaints against the parents no more family there because they are not ready to listen to the parents so then finish family is no more husband and wife then after children it is called the family <laughs> apart from them we have some other members your own father and mother and mother in law and father in law so today 
this is another case sometime father complains against grandchildren your mother's complaint against grandchildren so in these are internal conflicts in many families in the past especially in chinese culture they were very close to each other very close to each other grandparents were ready to look after the grandchildren in the past because of that grandchildren had very close affection to the grandparents unfortunately today when we come to a certain level of age 75 80 grandfather grandmother are very seriously ill the so they cannot help grand children this is also a natural situation anyway we should try to find solution through the teaching of the buddha we can apply it because it's a very vast feel the teaching of the buddha we can collect them in the sigalova sutta we are very familiar with the sigalova sutta lot of instruction given by the buddha how to manage with the members of the family that means parents how to do their service to their children they should look after them very well they should educate them very well they should introduce good friends to them they should give property during their suitable period so on parents have duties these duties help to build a proper management in the family and then children also automatically follow the teachings as mentioned in the sigalova sutta they respect their parents they look after the parents when they are sick they listen to the parents they follow the parents all these things from the children's side because each other close to each other they have mutual understanding parents and children between them that mutual understanding come the, through their respect parents respect children as their own children children respect parents as their father and mother so we should follow all these principles to build the proper family management otherwise family will collapse suddenly and again husband and wife once again i want to mention it this is the most important pillar in the house husband and wife they build the house their duties should be very meaningful how husband should respect wife wife should respect husband nothing to hide no secret duties both of them should be done in the past during the buddha's time some are different from today wife should respect highly husband just something like somewhat like a god early morning around 4 o'clock 
wife should get up even today indians they do it around 4 o'clock they should get up wives and clean herself and prepare a cup of milk go to the husband and offer the glass of milk and pay respect that is the hindu culture but buddha did not say we should do like that buddha said that each other should respect them that's very good husband and wife he wanted to change this kind of society that is why he was the revolutionist he was the socialist so he changed pay respect to each other have a real understanding don't keep any secret everything should be perfect and then when husband and wife follow this way children pay more respect to the father and mother they are happy to see what when husband and wife that mean mother and father sitting together talking friendly children are very happy one of my friends told me when he comes home after working in a company children are very happy to see when wife is sitting with his her husband so they are telling so many stories going around them they are happy so that atmosphere should be in the family to that appreciate it so when we follow all these things we can see the beauty of the family and again to have a beautiful family life especially with advice to associate with spiritual masters whenever problem comes any problem should go to the spiritual master and take instructions to find a solution either to a religious master or to a teacher it is the way we had in the past even today we can apply it you can select a suitable master for you teachers and clergy both of them we can consider as spiritual masters because they guide you perfectly that is why and then you should approach it to them whenever you want to find a solution because the life is a problem when you don't take real action if you take a real step whenever you have a question then it is not a problem till you find proper solution it is a problem the life is a problem we don't discuss that matter but personally if you think yourself life is a problem not only a problem life is with full of fear we don't say to others why with full of fear we don't like to see the last moment we don't like and we don't like to discuss about that so till we are here till the end of our life we should be ready to protect our family life and create happiness at home that is the very special thing you should create happiness not outside at home only 
with whom with your own family members so buddha introduced the way how to do it associating with the members of the family morning and evening before you go to work you should see each other you should normally we say goodbye we should say goodbye to each other in the morning before you go to work but nowadays we don't see each other early morning father is ready to go without telling hello to children that is wrong you should call your children and say please be ready for the daily work now i am going to work and then they come forward with a happy mood and they pay respect in sri lanka they do like that we have two stanzas to recite in front of the father and mother have you ever seen no have you ever heard it no so these two stanzas our children they recite early in the morning before they go to school dasa maase ure kattwa poseesi uddi karanam ayu digham vasatatan maatu padanna mama kyam chitra they recite it and then uddi kaaru aringitwa chumbitwa piya puttakam raja majjan sukatittam pitu padanna mama they are in part meaning is my mother you have protected me 10 months till i came to this world because of that i wish for you a good health and happiness saying so they pay respect and go to school same way they respect their father udhikaro aringitwa chumbitwa api puttakam raja majjan sukhitta pitu padanna mama my dear father you support me you feed me you wish to be a great one in the future so i respect you i wish you all the best saying so they go to school and now there is a question to build this family management so children are so close to us they have their own part to play in the family and then to recite stanzas like this how do they learn in sri lanka can you tell me how did they learn they can recite these two stanzas fluently when they come to 6 years old they can how do they learn they come to the temple every sunday for the sunday school and in the sunday school we teach still we have that kind of tradition but it is not easy to apply to our malaysian culture if i say that please child pay your respect to the father he will not be ready because this is a mixed culture that is the problem in malaysia one day or other if you come to sri lanka i will show you how they respect their parents so it is a must to have a proper family and they don't worry about their children because they follow the discipline under the guidance of sunday school teachings so here i i didn't find that kind of guidance but somehow or other we should try to introduce them at least once per month we should invite children into a hall like this and we should keep, keep in line the parents and ask children to come in a line and pay their respect to their parents we should teach them the qualities of parents and children and in front of parents we should appreciate the qualities of children 
then they become very proud of them in front of children we should appreciate the qualities of parents both side qualities of children and qualities of parents then they become very close to each other that is one what we should do in the past we had another kind of quality in our families when they were children wanted to go for a special kind of interview or any other examination so normally they took blessing from the parents blessing how they took blessing mother got up early in the morning and prepared some special kind of food called milk rice in sri lanka i am telling all thing everything from sri lanka so milk rice is a holy food and early morning she prepared it and gave to the child as a blessing and then en- enjoyed it after that they come to the mother and father and paid respect dear mother give permission to go dear father give permission to go and what they do they just bless them how they bless them touching the forehead oh my dear son oh my dear girl i wish you all the best with the blessing of the buddha dhamma and sangha may you get success they were ready to say like that that is the blessing of the father and mother today they don't do like that sometime what they do they give a very big kiss that's all no blessing when you give a kiss what happens become dirty the face yes that is not nice that is not the real way it is against the health it is against the health we should give blessing the embracing is not the real way that is why we have the meaningful way we have all buddhist countries we hold hands and say namaskar are you going wish you all the best like that very meaningful and we must know the power of the center of the palm now we have neglected it to just ask a scientist this center of the palm has a power even fingertips we know it fingertips have a kind of power more power in the center part of the palm that is why spiritual master show like this yes that is the meaning they didn't say that there is a power but there is a power according to science they have found out it it has a special power in the middle of the palm so we should do touching the forehead and bless properly with loving kindness and compassion it has been practiced since a long time but we know the meaning of it so parents should be ready to bless the children and children should be ready to respect the parents this is for the proper family management parents and children as well as connection with the place where they are that means the house if you have a proper management in your family others can see it when they go into your house if the house is well arranged if the house is with the kind of cleanliness if your house is with 
a kind of a spiritual background everything we can see because of your proper family management buddha has given instructions not to keep any dust at home or dirty at home mainly he mentioned that if you keep dirty things in your house it means your mind is dirty mind is dirty you are not comfortable if you are very comfortable your house is very attractive if you are mentally not comfortable you cannot arrange properly if you don't arrange house properly apart from your members of the family some mothers will come into your house who are they yes rats they are beings the visible animals rats and all other cockroach ants all these animals come apart from them invisible beings also come who are they you know pretas you know that word preta so they are ready to come they are very uh, happy to come into a house so buddha advised to be clean the houses but you cannot do if you are not comfortable yourself compound should be very attractive one and the inside of the house should be well arranged otherwise all kind of visible and invisible beings will come and disturb you do you agree with me that there are pretas some kind of pretas they come into our house you accept it yeah we should accept it because not because of the historical incidents scientists they have discovered it so that is very good for us now science has come to prove everything so we should not reject them we can accept them we, even not only buddhist even others now they also respect it they know it all the invisible powers come and disturb us so to have a proper family management we should arrange the family perfectly even material way not only family members but also all these material things should be arranged perfectly then the family will be very beautiful that is what world people should want to see beauty of the family not beauty of a single person many of us now ready to be single when we ask the question why you don't get married they say no better to be single better to be alone that is not a good answer it is not nice sometimes some of our friends are single what to do but yesterday i went for a dhamma talk in sentu on the way back i asked the driver are you a single or married he said single how do you feel now frankly he mentioned that bante i am boring now now i am 61 years old i think you know that <laughs> driver yes he he explained me about that when we come to a certain level of our age we become boring if you don't have a partner or children but again the other side also sometime we marriage we have children if they are crazy then again a problem that is why we should follow the teachings of the buddha to build proper family management 
that is why we should discuss all this so yesterday i got this uh, case that i was talking about his life so now he is alone he is alone and he is without a family so it is a very good experience for me without a family now so how to be happy now so we have many such single characters so now we cannot ask them to get married then we should try to make them happy that is the buddhist teaching either marriage or not we sh- it is our duty to show them the way to be happy so what kind of teaching we should introduce them to be happy do you have any answer single person what he should do yes he should associate with different activities welfare activities social activities voluntary work and practice meditation doing chanting he should continue that way without any gap if there is any gap then he become boring he should not find such a gap he should continue otherwise life will be very very boring in the future so that is the advice we can give to single persons marriage people should try to build a beautiful family life even now it is not late that is the teaching of buddha that is the beauty of the buddhism we don't fully reject anything we say still you have time still you have time you can change yourself and go ahead we should advise like that to our friends to be ready in this moment should not go to the past should not think about the future too much be ready now and start from this moment to be sure about your future to have a beautiful family life so in this way we should collect all the teachings and apply to our family life even in the mangala sutta mahamangala sutta buddha has mentioned some other duties we should practice mata pitu patana putta dara sanga ho that means to have a beautiful family life we should look after our elder elderly ones like father and mother we should not neglect it we should look after them putta dara sanga ho at the same time we should look after the wife and children so these principles preached by the buddha to have a beautiful family life and again in the sigalova sutta buddha narrated that to have a proper moral character you should follow some special principles what are they not to kill not to steal again he mentioned buddha mentioned that not to associate with bad friends and not to enjoy illegal sexual entertainments these are in the sigalo vasat to have to build a beautiful family background so these principles we can apply to our daily life and if we are okay 
we should ask our other friends to apply them if you have a successful family life you should be happy and again you should be ready to help others that is buddhism buddhism is to be happy and to make others happy these two things you have to remember buddhism for what to be happy and to make others happy so if you have a very successful family life you should have a kind of mission what kind of mission you should ask your friends to build such beautiful family life so it is a kind of service we do so dear friends so th- i think you are very happy with this instructions so we should try to apply them into your families and build beautiful buddhist families and enjoy here and here after till attain nibbana thank you very much for your listening if you have any question that you can ask question that we can discuss